Hello. 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 I believe this is where I fill out my absentee ballot stuff. Oh, we just need to see your guns. I think you want to go ahead and vote two days. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, okay, cool. The thing online said it like had to mail it to me, but oh, if I can just get it done. You can do it in office. Okay. Okay. In order to vote, you have to have a Missouri State ID. No, I don't. No, I don't. I've already registered to vote. Mm -hmm. I am registered. I, I remember you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember you. I remember you then that you had to have a Missouri ID. Where's the law on that? I. That it's not. I it's not real because I don't have to have a license in order to be a resident of Missouri. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to be a resident of Missouri to to to, in order to, to vote. vote. Right. Yeah. So therefore, you are a resident of the state of Missouri. Right. If you're not, then you can't vote. Right, I'm a resident. I don't need a license to be a resident. That's how that works. No, you, need a license. <laughs> you don't. If you need a piece of mail to provide evidence of where I reside, that would be one thing. But if you need a license to vote, there would be a lot of people not voting in this oh, state. That was almost a year ago that you came in here. Um, they've changed it with, uh, after 2020. They changed it where you have to have a Missouri. Well, you think that I wouldn't even be able to register if that was the case? Yeah, I don't remember particularly what you brought in or your address. Just because it's been almost a year ago. It's kind of like if I went down to a polling place, I don't have to show my license to vote. I can show my passport. Yeah, if you have, it still shows your house on record where you live. Nope, and not on a, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. <laughs> and no, it doesn't. It says where I was born. It doesn't say where I live in a passport. It has a house address on there. That is not true. That is 100% not true. Okay, Well, there's that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dad, do you have your phone on you? Uh, no. No? Okay. Sorry. They think in order to vote that I need a, a, a license in the state of Missouri. But I voted last spring. Didn't have a license in Missouri. Huh. I thought maybe you might need a. You've not voted since two thousand and eight. Uh, I voted for oh, wait, the wait, wait, no. the no. spring the election. Didn't come up, I found it. Yep. April second, twenty four. Yep. Oh, I had the right key. No license needed. Do you remember what you brought in? My U.S. passport, which has no address on it. I know Republicans are trying to make licenses required because it disenfranchises the vote to a lot of poor people and people who are... No, yeah? No, that's a fact. You can look it up. There's a lot of studies. That's why well, the Republicans are trying to do that. <laughs> well, I'm talking about objective reality. The Republicans are trying to suppress the vote because the more they get the vote out, the more the Republicans lose seats. No, it's not a matter of Republican or Democrat. It's a matter of fact that everybody has access to getting some kind of an ID, whether it be a driver's license, 
Well, maybe if they start providing those for free, maybe they're providing for free, then that would not. So the problem is, is when you have poor people who can't afford those IDs, when you require those IDs in order to vote, you're disenfranchising the poor people and you're disenfranchising people who no longer drive. No. Yeah, that's, this isn't an opinion. It's just a fact. That's like, not a fact. there's studies out there. You should do your homework. I, I encourage you. I you have no idea what you're talking about. Just say it's, an opinion. it's not an opinion. It's a fact. It's an empirical fact. It's, two plus it's not two a is fact. four. It's not a fact. <laughs> No. If I had a phone, another phone on me right now, I could pull it up. One that's not you. recording. Right, exactly. Yeah. I can't go on the internet. I remember you from recording. doing this last time you came in here. Yeah, I like to exercise my rights. No, you like to be obnoxious, is what you like to obnoxious? do. Obnoxious? Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem very professional. A yeah. public servant. I'm still on my lunch break. So. I'm paying you. Oh, you're on your lunch you're break? You're not paying me. I'm a taxpayer, don't yeah, and so right? am I. You get, you get paid by tax money. So am I. Like I'm a welfare taxpayer. recipient. Yeah. Gonna, you I'm get paid I'm taxes. Please. <laughs> please. So, can I get my absentee ballot, please? She's going down to get the law book for you. Okay. So, just waiting on her. Cool. Oh. I, I, you know, our country's going through a lot right now, mm -hmm. and I've gone through a lot with my rights being trampled on by my government. Why, why do you, people of this mindset, and I'm not saying you, <laughs> people of this mindset. I'm in this group. Why do you why do you point yourselves as victims? Why? What are you actually a victim of? Police brutality? Did you get beat? Yeah. Oh. As a minor. Oh. Um, Did you deserve police it? Police officers. <laughs> because <laughs> because question. I re because I said three things to them. I said I do not consent to searches. Okay. I'm going to remain silent and I want to see a lawyer. Mhm. Mm I was a child. They handcuffed child me to what a, age? 17. Okay. They handcuffed me to a bench for mm -hmm. seven hours, berating me and hitting me as I went to sleep. Okay. Because it was between midnight and 6 a.m. before they let me call my dad to and pick me up. And that has what to do with today? How old are you today? <sighs> Serious question. You know what? I don't even need this, all right? I, I'm I just, just want my absentee ballot. It's, it's a legit question. 40. 40. It is. You're 40 years old? I'm not 40 years old yet. Okay, 39. Not yet. 39? But that trauma has stuck with me, and there's been plenty of traumas since. And see, then. that's that's part of the thing that there's as we get older, as we get older and we mature, we let those things go, and we start facing life as a normal citizen, <laughs> not a normal citizen, but as an everyday citizen and accepting things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, not things that happened 17 years ago. Well, it continues to happen. I can tell you one uh, thing that you're a victim of. What's that? White privilege. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm the beneficiary of white privilege, but the patriarchy hurts us all in different ways. That's what intersectionality is all about. Oh. And the oppression that we face under the patriarchy affects us all differently, but we all suffer for it. You think you're oppressed? Do I think I'm oppressed yeah. is not what I said. No, and okay, what did you say? I so said I the intersectionality of oppression and patriarchy mm -hmm. affects us all differently, yeah. but we are all lesser for it. I misunderstood. I apologize. Do you need a receipt? <coughs> I've been incredibly privileged in my life. Um, Sir, do you need a receipt? That doesn't mean I sure, don't fight the for those that are in, like less fortunate than me <laughs> and to root out government corruption wherever I find it, which is why I record all my interactions, just in case you never know. Someone's going to say some zany stuff to you. It happens. And, but see, that's you know, part of the beauty, people I around think. here have been mostly great. Yeah, you know, well, as I say, I think that's the beauty different of places, our different country. Folks. You know, what are, depend, it doesn't matter what side of the government you're on, for or against. Mm -hmm. One of the beautiful things about our country is we all have that right to speak and say what we want to and how we feel. Whether right. you like it or not, whether I like it or not, right. doesn't even matter. When, even when you're being obnoxious. And that's exactly it. You have the right to be obnoxious, I have the right to be obnoxious. Right, totally. You know? And it's one of those ones that it doesn't matter, but that's the beauty of our government is we have that right. And there's better people than you and I that have fought and died for that right. Well, and the problem is when that right is trampled upon. So like when you look at the student protests going on college campuses about the Free Palestine Movement, and they're getting beat up by cops for no reason for a completely peaceful demonstration. Like, that is, is a big problem. And the fact that 
most of the people in our media and our politics don't even speak up for those people. And they're just like, well, they're probably anti-Zionist, anti-Semitic, which is not the case at all. And they're like, they're literally, these pro-Palestinian groups are being beat up by Nazis. And the cops just let it happen. And then they go in and beat them up some more and let the Nazis go. Like, that Have you partaken well in documented. That? Yeah, of course. Why? Why? Because I believe in like, I believe in stopping the genocide of the Palestinian people that we are 100% funding, like in a huge way. Um, we have been destroying those poor people since 1948 when we installed Israel as a state in the region in order to be a military base to project our power for oil interests that are in that area. Again, all well documented. No Chomsky made an entire career out of documenting the imperialism in the United States and how awful we are. Um, you buy into that? I buy into reality, objective facts. Your reality versus her reality, my reality, his reality. Could be two totally different things. But there's kind of two plus two equals four so, facts, and that's question, what I'm talking back about. Back to my question. Two plus two is four, yes. You, you buy into that reality that you were talking two about. Two plus two is four. I realize that two and two yeah. is four. But the reality that you were rambling about, you buy into rambling, that. Rambling, rambling. Okay, I'm done with your this conversation. Okay. I just want to get my business done. Okay. So, okay. what do we need to do to get my... Okay. Don't oh like God. it when people push you back, do you? No, I just... Um, <laughs> you're really stupid and ignorant, and I oh. don't want to be mean about it. You can it. leave my office. You can... Not yep, happen, you can sir. leave my office. It's in that book right there that you have to have a valid Missouri driver's license. Do it. Let's see it. You can leave my office. You're not going to sit here and be right. My employee. I didn't use any cuss words or anything. I don't care. She wanted to. She wanted to know why I wanted. Did I wanted to end the conversation and I did it nicely. And then she tried to be a person sassy applying about to it. register with an election authority. A deputy registration officer shall identify himself or herself by presenting. A birth certificate, a Native American tribal document, other proof of U.S. citizenship, and a valid Missouri driver's license. Can I see that real quick? She misquoted it. Do you have your passport on you? I brought it last time when I registered to vote. I'm already registered to, to vote. Prove, though. You have to prove, though. I already registered to vote. It doesn't matter. You have to prove who you are. That's not what it says here. A person applying to register with the election authority or deputy official shall identify himself by providing a copy of blah, blah, blah. Okay. A valid driver's license is one of them. Missouri driver's license. It's, it's, but that's or, not like that's not one of that's required. It's one of the other things. Other proof of citizenship, a valid Missouri driver's license, or other form of personal identification at the time of registration. I'm not registering. I already registered. Yes. I brought my, my passport in. I satisfied this already. I'm here for my absentee. Vote. Yes. You have to prove. I already did it. No, you have to prove it every single time you vote. Every single time I vote. Every single time you vote, you have to have a valid Missouri ID. This just says applying to register. It has nothing to do with voting. And so your point is, is that you're already registered? I'm already registered. And they're trying to deny me based off things that are not lawful. Nobody's denying you anything. But we will be open on Monday. And you have resorted to name calling. So I am going to ask you to leave my office in the most polite way that I can at this moment. So would okay. you please leave my office? You can come back Monday. If you bring your passport, you can vote. And you can take that with you. If you're registered, you can vote. You can take that with you when you leave my office. Will you please leave my office? Please? No, thanks. I do not feel comfortable with you. It's not your you. office. It's our office. No. It's public. I am an employee building. here. I have not created, I have not you broken have the law. You have already verbally abused me, and you will leave my office. Are you I've, refusing to leave my office? Correct. Okay. Come on, God. Let's go. I'm not leaving until I get my absentee ballot. Okay. I haven't broken a law. I cannot be removed from a public building unless I've broken a law. And I want my absentee ballot. 
When you bring your passport back with you on Monday. Show me where that says it on the law. The laws have. I'll you're, read it right past, here. You're past that. Section 115.135, Part 2. A person applying to register with an election accounting authority or a deputy registration official shall identify him or herself by presenting a copy of a birth certificate. You have become a Native verbally American abusive. tribal document. You can read other it all proof day long, of but you have become verbally abusive and I'm asking Missouri you to leave my license, office. Or other form of personal identification at the time of registration. I'm asking you so again this is just to leave my office. No, thanks. I'm in my public building trying to get my public services. You can refuse service. That's fine. I am That's just asking you. you to come back another day. I can make a complaint. Come back another and day and we can take care of this. I don't see any reason we can't get it done right now. You don't have the proper documentation. I've asked you politely. You have become verbally abusive and I'm asking you to leave. Hey, gentlemen. He wants to vote. He doesn't have a valid Missouri driver's license. The state of Missouri requires you to have a valid license for your passport. You have neither on him. And he is being very belligerent and very rude. We've asked him to leave. No. Okay. You get the proper documentation. You can vote. I'm already registered to vote it here. It doesn't matter. You have to show ID. I, when I register. Everybody else does. When I registered. And you have to do it every single time. Show me. I'm asking you to leave my office. I respectfully decline to leave a public building when I've created, I've committed no law, I, I've broken no law, I've committed no crime. Okay. What's the what, what what? Are you trying to gain? I am registered to vote in this county. Okay. Uh, first of all, can I get your name and badge number really quick? Name and badge number? Mooney. My name. Mooney? Mooney. You guys have badge numbers? Or? Okay. Well, actually, no. I mean, cool. 2703. Yeah. What is it? Okay. All right. So anyway, I'm here to get an absentee ballot. I will not be here on election day. I'll be out of the country. Understood. Um, I'm already registered to vote. I came here with my U.S. passport. Okay. I don't need a license to vote in the state of Missouri. Where's your passport? It's at my house because I'm already registered to vote. And when I went online, there's nothing about I need to reprove okay. um, my citizenship because my, my passport proves my citizenship, even though I think you have to be a citizen to get a license in Oregon which is where my license is, is in Oregon. In the state of Oregon? Yeah. I'm living here taking care of my father, which is why I'm here, but I'm not going to move my entire life here. I'm moving part of my life here. How long have you lived here? Well, well I first came here in 1987, but I registered to vote last fall. I went to school for my undergrad in Rolla. You know, I, my dad has been here since 1947 at his house. Okay. Um, so I'm just here to get my absentee ballot. She started some probing questions and trying to start a, a personal conversation, which I entertained to an extent. And then I knew I was getting to a point where I just wasn't having it. And I told her, I'm done with this conversation. And she gave me some kind of snarky, like, oh, you don't like it when push, people push back. And I was like, well, I just, I can tell that you're stupid and ignorant. And so I just want to stop it here. So that's, that's the level of rude that I got was saying the words stupid and ignorant. And I tried to stop before that, to, and and but she just kept she wanted to push buttons, so I pushed back a little bit. Her, so that that's that's as high as it got was I called her stupid and ignorant. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Make you come back on Monday with his proper ID, and we would get his ballot done. Now, to my knowledge, that's not a crime to say stupid and ignorant, <coughs> and I can't be removed from a public building unless I'm outside of business hours or have committed a crime. Like harassing someone? Yeah, or like um, Scott causing a disturbance or, Which you have done or like assault. Insulting the staff on this facility. Well, I mean, she can't be the complainant for something like that. You can't be the complainant for a disorderly. I can't. Yeah. You, but her working in the clerk's office as an employee at the office, yes. For me, as law enforcement, my peace cannot be disturbed. Her, right. as a clerk, a secretary in an office, her piece can be disturbed. But it's kind of a similar thing, right? Because if I just came up and said, hey, I'd like an absentee ballot, and, you know, let's say she doesn't like the color of my skin or whatever, she can't be like, oh, you're being disorderly, you have to get out of here. That wasn't the case, it was no. the words that came out of your mouth that you chose to use. Right, but I, I wasn't the, the being problem. threatening in any way. I wasn't, like, physically being 
whatever. It was, was yeah. But the point is, you can't get your absentee vote. They've told you that. Well, but they so haven't why? provided a law. So what they're doing is so, not lawful. The law says I'm registered to vote. When I registered to vote, I provided my proof of citizenship, and now I need my absentee ballot. Well, you live in the state of Missouri, and you still haven't uh, got your license switched over to Missouri, too. Right. But you have 30 days to do, which that's a law that you've broken. So I, I don't know what you're trying to get here. They're, you're well, obviously I, not going to get here and, and treat them poorly to get what you want. I don't understand why I was being cordial for a long time, and again, okay, I tried I to understand. cut off the conversation okay, before. I understand, but you're, now you're upset. They've asked you to leave. They can't help you. They're telling you they're not going to help you until you bring proof of ID in. So why is it so hard to do that? Why why are we bucking up to it? Because my rights are being trampled on. My, I have a right to vote, and there's nothing in here that and says that I need to provide my passport when I go absentee. The, the action to take is going to find them telling you, absolutely. Right, well, yeah. That's if, your right, 100%. Right, well, I need to first establish standing. So if you guys break enough laws, then I have standing for a court case. Because right. um, you then can't the, get the, into a courtroom without where, standing. Here's where it's going to be, though. These ladies, have you, I, I'm, last I, I just walked into this, you've asked him to leave? Multiple times. Okay. Yeah. Then you need to leave. Even though I've committed can, no crime. You, you may. I've committed no crime and I'm in public. In an office that says that you're not to be here. They, and they ask you to leave. You need to. You can step. That's out, private, right outside. not public. You can step. This right is outside public. Here. When you cause a disturbance, that is a problem. They've asked you to leave because you caused a disturbance. And they that, can be the complaining. They can be the complaining party for a disturbance. Absolutely. And the disturbance is usually is literally my my freedom of speech, with no obscenity or indecency, whatsoever. I, I wasn't in here to tell you one way or the other, but. Got it all right here if you want to watch it. But Absolutely. there's obscenities, which there are limited amounts in which you can say, okay, obscenities aren't allowed in these contexts. There's nothing obscene about stupid and ignorant. No, we're all about we're it's all an opinion. About, we're all about you and your rights, 100%. Uh -huh. But part of exercising those rights is that you can get an attorney if you believe that they have violated your rights. Right. Me as well. If they totally. believe I violated your rights, get an attorney. Yeah, please. like them denying Absolutely. me a absentee ballot. Even though there is no law hey, here, requiring, here, 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 here. where's the law that says Hang you on. can't give me one? No. No, talk to me, please. Okay. Talk to me. Okay. That is part of the disturbance part. Is when you two start yelling or getting back and forth, that is a problem. Okay. So we have no issue with it. You can get your absentee ballot if you meet their requirements. If you don't want to meet their requirements, then then if you well, believe I have your to meet the requirements of law. Listen to me. Okay. If you believe your rights have been violated, uh -huh. the action you have is not yelling back and forth. It's not becoming, refusing to leave somewhere. It is find an attorney and take appropriate action. There's not a criminal law here violated other than if you're causing a disturbance in this office, you are violating a criminal law, 100%. Okay? That is a criminal law, and I can show that to you all day long. So you're going to threaten me with trespass if I don't leave? If they've told you to leave. Right, but I don't have any authority. If you this threaten me with trespass, then I have standing. Then I can pursue everything. Honestly, so, I'm not threatening trespass. I'm telling you, if you're causing a disturbance, you will leave. Or? By law. Or? If you're causing a disturbance, you can be arrested for causing a disturbance. Okay, so if I leave, what will happen? If I don't leave, what will happen? Depends on how you're how you're acting. Sitting right here, just hanging out. Right now, you're cool. Okay. You're not causing a disturbance as we speak. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. If you cause these ladies a disturbance, and they and they have asked you to leave, and you have caused a disturbance, according to the ladies. So if I sit uh, here what I would, until what closing, I ask, what I would ask you to do? What's going to happen? I would ask you to let's go look at laws. Let's talk. Okay. Now, right here is not the place to do it, not the time. But I will sit down with you in my office, and we'll look at the law. We'll look at statutes. I have no issue with that. I'll help you in this particular I one. I don't know what that book is. Where's well, election laws? Yeah. Right. But there are statutes out there that they they run their entire office off the statutes. Right. Okay. If you're saying you'd be down and, to and sit down boss. and go through like what the absentee ballot process is and the laws required yeah, right now, I'd love that. to do that. Hundred percent. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. My office is not recorded, though. You're not going to come in and record our conversation in my office. 
What I about can, in the I, lobby? Out in the hallway, if you want to record that all day long. Yeah, let's do it in the lobby. But I have cameras in my office anyway. It doesn't matter. That I can I, I do a public, public records request for. Have, yeah, if, yeah. We, if we have a conversation, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because your office is public and your cameras are public. And so well, my office is private, my office. It is a public office, but I, I have enough material on my desk that is not... Right, that's confidential. <laughs> right, yeah, but so the cameras are publicly caution, owned, so therefore... That's why I caution yeah. recording. Okay. Okay. It's not that you can't... Yeah, personal identifying you, information. 100%. Yeah, I totally get I, it. But I have a ton of that on my desk right now. That's why I couldn't... I can't... Sit there and say, oh, let's well, go yeah. All Where can we sit down and go through the the laws on this absentee ballot that I'm trying to get done? What, how about we How about we sit down in my lobby because I have I have the ability to go to a computer, look up laws, walk out. Cool. That. I'd be happy to do that. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Is I that, appreciate that. Is that their book? Yep, that's yeah, their book. Okay, hang on. Let me see. Let me see what. You can, take it, you can take it with well, you. I'm gonna look at it and see. Yeah. And your and your yours you have your sheet. Yeah, the voter registration sheet. Yeah, his card. Can I, can I have a copy? His card? No, no, or just, just a blank one. one. Yeah. So we can look at that and talk about that. Yes, oh, okay. Okay. Um, must, can I, may I step back there? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Okay. I'm going to Europe. Uh, Austria, Czechia, Switzerland, and Germany. Certain, certain like places that you're going, like. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to get into my whole itinerary. <laughs> I'm just saying, like sightseeing, he's like are you going to World War II monuments or if you would like, um, um, you can see through the window. Uh, right past this building right here is my office. Okay, just past the hospital. Yeah. Okay, it's eye off that corner. I'll, I'll sit down with you out in the lobby all day long. All right. Cool. All right. Sound good. I've got this information. I've got their what they're looking at, and we'll talk about what the laws are. Cool. Uh, what was your name? Hilty. Yep. I'm the sheriff here. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. And like I said, I I have no issue, and they don't. Need, if they have rules, they have to follow. Yeah, and I just don't think they know what they to, are is the and, problem. And and that's okay, but yeah. they can't change that while you're sitting here today. It's not going to happen. They can't right. change it. They have a boss, they, which is the elected official. Uh, I'm guessing she's not in today. Yeah. Well, their boss is not in today. So until their boss and all that happens, if it is, if they do deem yeah. that what you're saying is wrong or right or either way, yeah. their boss is the one that makes well, the decision. Well, it seems easy not enough. You ladies. just you just read through the laws and it's pretty easy. Right. I mean, but, the the thing they showed me. We all me have to go by I'm the totally attorney right. general and and what the what the state. Cool. Yeah, let's hammer so it let's, out. Let's 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 take a look, please. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, right. And I'm and I'm on foot. You're welcome. Oh, he's talking about my dad. Uh, oh, 